1968, Irish School was opened on 515 Irish Drive, which is uh, out west uh, Vine Drive, uh, past Taft Hill Drive, and there's a little street, and it, the street was named for Jean Irish, and the school was named, is named for Jean Irish. Jean Irish uh, in Fort Collins was a single parent with the responsibility of of one child to raise, and she began teaching part-time for the uh, child guidance clinic in Fort Collins, and later became teacher and principal for uh, the Laporte Avenue and Washington Street schools. Hi, I'm Scott McDonald, and I've been a student in Irish for three, since third grade for three years, and this is Mrs. Jean Irish, for whom Irish school was named after. Um, Mrs. Irish, what kind of schooling have you had? It's a combination of many, many things. Okay. When I came originally from Missouri, mm. and uh, so I went to elementary school and high school in mm. Missouri. And then, uh, so I, and I taught school in Missouri mm -hmm. before I went to college. I uh, taught two years in rural schools. They permitted that then. And um, what did you go for in college? And I what? went to a university here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was called uh, Colorado A&M mm -hmm. at that time, 1929. Yes. <clears throat> when I first started. And, and, go ahead. Mm -hmm. and um, it said in my notes that you wrote a biography on age done. Um, was there any special reason you picked him? Well, I had to choose uh, something for my research. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <coughs> pardon me, and uh, one day when we had a teacher's meeting, Mr. Dunn came uh, to the meeting and talked to the teachers. And uh, I was so impressed with his message and I thought, well, somebody should write about Mr. Dunn, mm -hmm. that he has uh, given so much to the Fort Collins schools and to the area. And uh, I thought this shouldn't be wasted because uh, he has so much to offer still uh, in his old age. And uh, so I right away requested the, the opportunity to write his life. And he told me he would be honored to have me write a biography of his life, which I appreciated. It says here that you were, one, you were first a part-time teacher at the Child Guidance Center. What was that? In the uh, 30s, uh, we had a child guidance clinic mm -hmm. here and with Dr. N.L. Ebel. And he came once a month to Fort Collins mm -hmm. to um, interview the child guidance people mm -hmm. through elementary and junior high. And uh, since I had done my practice teaching on the campus uh, in psychology, uh, I was selected to give the psychological tests to all of these people before he came. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Dr. Ebal would come and interview the people after I had given the test. You have been both a teacher and a principal quite a few times. Which job did you enjoy more? Well, I started at, uh, Fort, at uh, La Porte Avenue mm -hmm. School, and this was time when I was teaching half time, and then I would, they would get a substitute for me while I gave these psychological tests mm -hmm. for the clinic. But um, when uh, the Depression came, they ran out of money, mm -hmm. and they had to uh, stop the clinic. So then I went into full-time teaching at Laporte, and later I was transferred to Washington, mm -hmm. and I taught second, well, first, second, and third grades, mm -hmm. and finally I taught second. Mm -hmm. and. In 1952, 
I was named teaching principal. Mm -hmm. I was principal at Washington and teaching too. And so uh, that uh, I enjoyed the superintendent, Mr. Manier, told me I could take a fifth or sixth grade if I would like to, to have help. And I told him my second graders could do everything that I needed. <laughs> um, what positions did you hold while you were at Irish Elementary? What position did I hold? Hold at Irish. Oh, at, uh, I didn't teach at Irish school at all. At all? <clears throat> you see, it was uh, built after I retired. Oh. So I, I taught only at Washington and mm -hmm. the port. <clears throat> but uh, I was uh, principal, administrative principal, at uh, Washington and La Porte Avenue for eight years before I retired. Long time. Mm -hmm. um, how did you feel about having a school and a street named after you? Well, it was a great surprise. You might know with my name being Irish. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Bowles called me the evening before the board met to decide on names for the schools. And uh, he told me I had been nominated <clears throat> and would I accept the school if I, my name was chosen. Well, I said, Irish. And he said, well, your name, you're nominated. Well, I, the next morning, I didn't even listen to the radio because I knew they wouldn't name a school Irish. And uh, then the phone rang, and uh, Mrs. Werner, who was one of the teachers at Laporte Avenue, mm -hmm. and later taught, and was a principal and worked in the school office, she called me and told me, congratulations, that a school had been named for me. So it was a great surprise, of course. How about the street? How about the street? Well, the street was named later. Um, I have the, have the dates um, somewhere. Uh, the city of Fort Collins and the school board named the street uh, Irish Drive. Mm -hmm. And it just happened that they named it on my son's birthday, yes. November 20. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, so, I said, to me, it's it's Bill's Drive, mm -hmm. uh, Irish Drive. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, oh, how did you feel about being a single parent? How did it? How did you feel about being a single parent? Uh, being a what? A single parent. Oh. Well, I, uh, it was, seemed to be no problem because uh, uh, Bill and I were busy. I had, uh, had taken courses in Kansas City. We had, a, I took a course in Kansas City and I, it was prestigious name was called the, the Kansas City, Missouri Council of Parents and Teachers Systemized preschool program and I, I studied for three years mm -hmm. with, in this program and I received a diploma and then I uh, was assigned to three elementary schools in uh, the Kansas City area mm -hmm. to give talks to preschool mothers mm -hmm. and uh, so I don't know we were so busy Bill and I and he was in um, second grade when we moved here. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a single parent, I think Bill's uh, uncles and his grandfather uh, became like a father to him. Um, oh, yeah, I've heard that you would like to have um, Irish school, the name changed to Jean Irish. And um, how would you feel about two names? I would like very much for, while I'm still living, 
for them to call it the Jean Irish to avoid the nationality. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, so many people uh, wonder why they have an Irish school in mm -hmm. Fort Collins. <clears throat> and of course, after they stop to think, they know they wouldn't have. But uh, uh, one of the boys at Irish school several years ago said, I don't know why they named it Irish. There are many more Germans. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you feel about two names for this school? Well, I think Jean Irish wouldn't be any longer than Riffenberg. <laughs> so that's, that's the way I thought. I've been thinking about it, and I thought, well, and for quite a long time they called uh, the new school uh, Laporte School Juan Falano, mm -hmm. and they kept using his name Juan. And I thought, well, if they could say Juan Falano, they could say Jean Irish. <laughs> and I'm hoping that they will call it the Jean Irish Elementary. And uh, there are many schools in the area that um, have longer names than Jean Irish. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think. Uh, it, the students and the teachers perhaps uh, would feel better if they had the name Jean Irish instead of just Irish. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, one final thing. Um, is there any special teaching job or anything you did that really sticks out in your mind as you think it was really nice, you really liked it? Well, I think just being with children is the thing I enjoyed. Uh, and that's why I chose to stay with second grade mm -hmm. instead of uh, taking a fifth or sixth grade. And my little second graders were as much help to me and I could depend on them. And they, uh, uh, when I had to leave the classroom to go to the office, I could always depend on the children to be going on with their work. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes, you know, in fifth and sixth grade, you wonder <laughs> yeah. what's going on. I know how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> you hope that everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I uh, And when I visited uh, over at Irish Elementary for the uh, your play, it's Tom Sawyer, uh, they had all the children seated all around on the floor, you know, and the uh, superintendent or the principal gave me a front seat, mm -hmm. and uh, it reminded me of the times at Washington and La Porte Avenue when we would have uh, assemblies. Mm -hmm. Instead of putting up chairs for all the children, we'd have them sit on the floor this way, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I felt right at home sitting there, you know, I had children right up to my feet. <laughs> so I, I, I think uh, I still feel that the nicest thing in the world would be to be around children. And I have many, many nephews and in different generations. Now my brothers and sisters are now the older generation. Our uncles and aunts are all gone. And then we have a second generation, and a third, and a fourth, and we have two children in the fifth generation. And I claim all of them. <laughs> uh, I'm Aunt Jean to all of them. <laughs> okay, thank you very and much. I appreciate this very much, and uh, I want to tell you again how much I enjoyed your part in the Tom Sawyer play. Okay, and, uh, thank you. So, I re I'll recognize you now wherever I see you. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, and I appreciate Pooter R1 School uh, doing this. Uh, when I was first called about it, I thought, no, I, I'm going to try to keep a low profile the rest of my life. And uh, as I get older, I want the children to remember me as I looked in the picture when the school was dedicated. But uh, um, you talked me out of it, <laughs> so, and uh, 
I appreciate Pooter Orwand and Mr. Weber's uh, helping you plan this. This was your idea, I think, in the, in the beginning. I think we appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh -huh. I'm Shelley Hyden. I spent all seven elementary years in Eyestone Elementary. This is Bob Eyestone. What were your reactions when you found out that a school would be named after you? Well, the only reactions I can think of is that I was surprised. I, uh, I didn't know they were going to do it, and uh, I guess I still don't know why they did. <laughs> Where did you receive your degrees in teaching? I received my uh, bachelor's degree from the uh, University of Northern Colorado in Greeley, and my master's degree from uh, uh, CSU in Fort Collins. Uh, why, did you do, why did you decide to teach? Well, that, uh, that's a question. I think I decided to teach because when I was a senior in high school, that would be way back in 1926, you could take a county examination and if you could pass it, you could teach. Well, I took the county examination in the spring of 1926 and passed it and got a job teaching a school about eight miles north of my home called Buffalo Grass. That school had 42 students in eight grades. I taught there for one year, and uh, I don't know how how hardly to teach 42 kids in eight grades, except I'd say this, that the first three grades got most of their teaching from the top eight grades, the students in the top eight grades. Then I went to the University of Colorado a year. I thought I was going to take medicine, but I decided I didn't have money enough to do that, so I went back and got a job teaching and taught for two years in another rural school in Yuma County. Uh, I think one of the things that stands out in my mind about that school, there weren't that many students. I think there were 29, if I remember correctly. But one interesting thing we used to do is learn the multiplication tables. And everybody in grade one through grade eight learned the multiplication tables. And there was a little girl named Irma Hines in grade one that could say the tables faster than anybody else in school. I suppose she could say them faster because she could talk faster. <laughs> what were... What courses did you like to teach the most? Math. Because in math, you know what you're doing. You either get them right or you get them wrong. And I think when you're teaching something else, that uh, whether I give you an 80 or an 82 or a 90, depends too much on me. How many years did you teach classes? Well, let's see. I started in 1926 and I taught until 1972, with the exception of two years. How many years were you principal? Oh. Let's see. I was principal at Hereford for four years and at Rocky Ridge from 1935, Rocky Ridge is right down the road here, from 1935 to 1939, then I was principal at Waverly from 1939 to 45, and I was principal here at Wellington from 45 to 72. You've been in a lot of schools. Yeah. Did you teach after you were principal? Yes, I taught Perdner all the time. I didn't, uh, 
Well, I'd say this, that there was an every year that I didn't teach at least one class. Sometimes the class didn't have very many in it, and I'd teach the class just because I had some students here at Wellington especially who had had some uh, math and really needed some advanced math. So maybe I'd teach only four or five students, but I'd be teaching them some math that we weren't given as regular math. So I always was teaching somebody, and I thought that you kept in closer contact with the students if you did teach at least one class. What was your biggest challenge while you were teaching? You know, that, that's something. The biggest challenge, I suppose that the biggest challenge was to try to keep something going that I thought the kids would stay interested in. If you didn't have the kids interested, they didn't like to come to school. If you could start your career over again, would you still be an educator or would you go into something else? Well, from what I know now, I, I'm sure I'd still be an educator. I loved it all the time and I, I'm sure I still would like it. Do you have any hobbies? Hobbies? I suppose gardening. I have a, a greenhouse which I don't use so much anymore on account of the cost of heat. But I still get quite a little kick out of the greenhouse. Tell me about your family. And let's see, my wife died in 1972. I have two children. One of them teaches in Kansas now, Bob. And the other one lives down just north of Terry Lake, between here and Fort Collins. That's Janine. Do you have any grandchildren? Yes, I have four. I have one, Angela, that lives here in Wellington. And I have uh, twin boys. Uh, Janine has twin boys. And of course, they live north of Terry Lake. Let's see, I think they must be about 15. And she has a girl that's 13. Let's see, the girl's name's Melanie, and the boy's name are John and Tony. John's a short John, J-O-N, and he's about six foot three. That's <laughs> um, my favorite memories. I would say that I remember 51, 1951 pretty well because the school won state championships in both football and basketball. Uh, I guess that would be in the fall of 51 and spring of 52, wouldn't it? Did you enjoy teaching bas or coaching basketball and football? Well, I enjoyed coaching basketball anyway. And back in those days, if anybody coached football, you had to because at that time, it was pretty hard to get any men teachers. The fact of the matter is, it was for a year or two that I didn't have any other men teaching in the school. And you see, they were in the, in the Army. And maybe there just wasn't that many men teaching, I don't know. How have schools changed? How, can you tell that schools have changed a lot since you've stopped teaching? Well, I don't think I'd be an authority on that. Uh, people who are teaching tell me that they've changed quite a little. I think when they mean that they've changed, they mean that discipline's changed. I think that's what they're thinking about more than anything else, is discipline in the schools. Uh, of course, I'd say this. 
I believe they do a lot, a lot of things that we wouldn't have considered doing. That is, instead of spending all their time all uh, singing classes, they probably spend more time in uh, recreation. I'm not sure about that, though. Okay. Is there anything that we haven't mentioned that you'd like to bring out? Any memories, any people, any anything that you'd like to chat about that we haven't talked about? Well, I would say this, that the schools up here had their up and, up and downs. We've had quite a few in some graduating classes, and I remember one graduating class that just had four. I couldn't tell you just what year that was right now offhand. If we are up at school, we could look and see. But uh, it's, uh, the number that's been in school has varied quite a little. And I know this, there are quite a few more in school now than there was when I was there. Of course, I do know this, they take in more territory too, especially to the south. They picked up some territory that we didn't used to pick up. But uh, I'm sure that there are more kids around than there were. Could you tell me about Byron White, who used to, go, used to come here? Uh, he graduated in 1934, I believe. Uh, and I came over in 1945, but his folks still lived here when I came here. And Byron White uh, has been here a number of times. He gave a commencement address here. Uh, I thought an interesting thing about him was, uh, in spite of the fact that he was a Supreme Court justice, he was a pretty common fellow when he was here. I remember when he was up on the stage and talking that he called out the names of several fellows that he knew when he was here in school. And I remember him talking about him playing with uh, uh, football pants on that were held up by twine strings when he was in school. They have a picture of uh, Byron White in the office at school that his wife sent to us. In his, uh, in his uh, regular robes, I mean, you know. Um, how did Wellington lose its high school? They, did You did have a high school and then and now it's a junior high. By a vote of the county to consolidate with uh, Fort Collins and the uh, People from here, of course, have gone to Poudre High School ever since. Let's see, I think they started to Poudre High School. I think that vote was taken in about 1960, but they went to, started to Poudre High School in 1964.